Bismillah. It's great to be here presenting in my home country. I was born in Stoke-on-Trent in Staffordshire in 1954. My parents moved to Bournemouth in 1956. Um, where I went to school and grew up fishing the Stour and the Avon and the Hampshire and Dorset coasts. And I love that coastline. Um, and studying the forest ecology, especially the new forest in Hampshire and its commons, which I feel privileged to have visited in the last few days. Um, I moved to North Devon in 1974 and started surfing and winter traveling almost out of necessity as an English surfer. And um, that led me to Australia in 1979. And it was in that first year I came across permaculture. And I've become more involved every year since. And now, in 2015, um, I'll be 61 this year, and I'm pretty sure it's a terminal infection. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to recover. If, if we look around at our planet through the eyes of an intelligent visitor from another world, and assess the Earth's biggest challenges, the most obvious would be the problems created by the human population, yeah? I think probably 99.9% .9 of the activity seems to be fueled by kind of self-interest, competitive greed, non-cooperation, exploitation of people and resources, and maybe we're just 1%, you think there's 1% of positive patent action facilitating productive ecosystems and abundance? Maybe, maybe 0.01%. I don't know, have we got 7 million? No. Who've heard the word permaculture yet? Because it's the other 99% or 99.9% .9 who are the real audience. Throughout our existence, the human race has been responsible for creating tremendously harmful imbalances impacting both living and non-living systems of the Earth. Our planet is currently suffering unparalleled rates of species extinction and biodiversity losses. These problems are symptoms and large indicators of really major evil in action ecosystems on a worldwide scale and are, are unable to endure the continuous negative human forces. A major climate stabilizers they are. They're collapsing across the world, across the earth, they're collapsing. There are stabilizers. These life-rich systems are the shock absorbers, like the shock absorbers in your car take out the vicious bounces. They allow for points of balance to be restored after massive fluctuations in energy, such as hurricanes and cyclones and other natural catastrophe. Without them, our own existence comes into question as well. Energy systems can also be thought of as energy stores, st energy storage systems with expressions of full diversity from the top predator to the mass life weight diversity expressed in soil organisms, where most of the life weight is, with soil creation as a consequence and an indicator of energy charge capacity. Energy being constant, quote Einstein, as we simplify and destroy global ecosystems, our climate becomes more energetic, yeah? The energy has to go somewhere. The variations in our global climate extremes are more volatile every year. 
and exponentially increasing. In every region of the world, we're experiencing record-breaking extremes in all directions, simultaneously reaching the upper limits of one system and the barest bounds of another. The hottest, the coldest, the biggest drought, the biggest floods, the biggest winds, everywhere worldwide at the same time. This doesn't have to be the reality we live in. We know the attitude, we know the approach, and the science which can cure all that ails us. After 25 years of designing, teaching, consulting on every continent throughout the world, I feel the solution is very obvious With permaculture design, we can not only impede our current negative effect, we can reverse it into a positive one. With potent potential, with the potent potential of permaculture like an infectious global pandemic, we have to infect people. So they are infectious. All we have to do is hone in and pay close attention to the natural systems. Through our enhanced observation skills, anyone can see the very obvious cause and effect reactions in all biological systems. Using both climatic moder moderation and ecosystem species richness as gauges, Positive feedback loops intensify beneficial effects. These are what both people and the, e and the environment need. Positive feedback loops intensifying beneficial effects. A massive increase in positive feedback loops. Permaculture specializes in this field finding beneficial interactions between elements and creating as many of these connections as possible. We need an evolution of the way we think. It's now recorded with neural, neural science, the new neural pathways where we can see one synapse in the brain fire with the ultrasound accuracy that we now have, that it's believed that we actually grew a slightly bigger brain at the point where we started to read and write and describe the world in, in actual writing with numbers and, and letters and words. There was an evolution in our brains. I think that's what we do to people when we teach them permaculture, we put that final shine on that neural cortex. The outer brain gets just a fraction bigger, that last fractal, that design mind evolution. I get worried about what we do to students. <laughs> it concerns me. I feel responsible. And I've lost four in the field on aid work. They died for this. So it's pretty serious. The approach of permaculture design can solve all of the global challenges bearing down on our strained biosphere. Our initial action should be to stabilize our systems. Only then can we, and we absolutely without a doubt can do this, Convert these systems into reliable, consistent, and permanent resources possessing true and useful value. The problem is the solution. Every problem is a potential opportunity. It's up to us to change our perceptions. 
It's up to us to allow for unlimited abundance and positivity. With our vision of the emerging future, we can all achieve together. It starts with ethics. It's about ethics. It's about design. And it is about science. We're an ethical design science. First and, first and foremost, we must engage with our current water management and access crisis. Water is essential to life systems. Our first speaker spoke about that quite well and the history of the snowball earth and our, our water events. We look for it on other planets because it's the chief indicator for a world's ability to conceive and sustain complex life forms. Uh, when we look at another planet, if there's a chance there's water there, there's a chance there's life there. That's how we look at the universe. Personally, I've been fascinated by water all my life. I've been intensely engaged in all aspects, in, in all its aspects, from small-scale harvesting systems built by hand to immense landscapes built with enormous earth-moving machines. I have an in-depth understanding and a long-lasting expertise with aquatic dynamics and their crucial role in building life-rich systems. In the extreme climates and landscapes, water is the priority in design. Yet, clean drinking water is becoming extremely rare. In the natural world, and is now becoming only a manufactured product in most locations. That's pretty sad. The World Health Organization reports that more than 750 million people lack access to clean drinking water. Now, how clever are we? Diarrhea caused by inadequate drinking water, sanitation, and hand hygiene kills an estimated 842,000 people every year globally. That's approximately 230, no, 2,300 people that are going to die today and every day. Irrigation water is also in more demand all the time, ridiculously in more demand all the time. Industrial agriculture is increasing the world's dependency on irrigation technology. That's clever, right? Due to its, to, for its ever-growing thoughtless actions regard, you know, without regard to the holistic integration of natural systems. We're just going to go the technical route towards irrigation technology. The signs of water strain globally are the flood and drought regimes, which are increasing. And rising in frequency, and more importantly, in high-end variability. By implementing permaculture design and constructing productive ecosystems that are sensitive and aligned with holistic, integrated integrations of natural systems, we can reverse this effect to appropriately design life-rich systems that harvest, pacify, and allow access to ample clean water, all while providing for our needs, is the ultimate indicator of our ability and intelligence. That simple H2O. We have an obligation and a responsibility to achieve this as an evolutionary process. As a species, I know we found the holistically designed science system capable of this feat. Permaculture is the vehicle of our evolution. Water has so many constants 
of all the elements on Earth, water has probably the most constants in the way it behaves. And by patterning water the right way, we can be the most productive. It is the most productive element. The most production comes from water itself in protein and plant material and mass growth. The most productive plants, the most productive protein, the mo most productive forage, they're all water. Water defies gravity somewhat. First water, the mantra of a designer. First water, then access, then structural positions, before anything else. The other large-scale challenge created by industrial agriculture is soil depletion. Industrial agriculture is degrading and destroying soil fertility and physically eroding soils on a global scale at permanent loss rate faster than ever before in history. Soil is the core of sustainability. It's the ultimate physical indicator that a, a practical system is sustainable. If you're not creating soil, or at least not destroying soil, which is pretty hard to stay on that line, you may as well be creating more soil in quality and quantity, then you are sustainable. Nothing else gives you that indicator, nothing. A sustainable system produces more energy than it consumes and enough in surplus to maintain and replace its component parts over their lifetimes. End of story. That is sustainable systems. You don't need to waffle on about it. By measuring and improving soil quality while creating new soil with appropriate interactions, we can begin the journey towards soil abundance. Soil is the most complex living system in the known universe. It deserves our appreciation and respect. Agriculture in its present form does not stand the test of time. It's a very bad idea, actually. It's a very bad idea to develop and, st and structure any system to be eternally reliant upon finite resources. It's just basic mathematics. Our biggest mistake in history has been to try and provide our needs from living elements without taking the responsibility of paying serious attention to the changing effects they have on the natural world. I've just visited a few sites and filmed a few sites around England. I've seen some amazing work. I visited Graham Bell's property in Coldstream in Scotland and I was amazed at 800 square metres of absolute abundance in a, in a cold climate on the same latitude as Moscow with Graham's estimate of two tonnes of earthworms in the soil on 800 square metres. There's probably five to ten times as much bacteria because they have to have bacteria to live on and there has to be an abundance of them. That's without the fungi interaction, the flagellates and protozoas and nematodes are all beneficial action in the soil. It's probably an equivalent of 200 tonnes of life per acre on that soil, in that soil. We concentrate on feeding the soil and our crazy system at Zaytuna Farm, which is not a sensible farm whatsoever, it's just a, a mad experiment research centre that you would never dream of designing in that form as a family farm. It's totally undisciplined and practice ground for people who want to come and make mistakes. We throw compost at the soil at an alarming rate. Every week we put a, a, a cubic metre of compost on 150 square metres and repeat that every 20 weeks as we cycle chickens across a garden. It works out to somewhere about, somewhere between 50 to 80 cubic metres an acre minimum, sometimes up to 200 cubic metres an acre. It sort of compensates for everybody's playing around with the place. And of course it's more productive all the time. I've got a better garden than I ever had. Every year I have. We all should have, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we have a better system every year? If we haven't, why not? I don't think that's very hard. 
But poverty is the end result of this environmental injustice. Our injustice towards the environment creates poverty. Worldwide hunger is growing. And it's not slowing down. The sad fact is more children go hungry every day. The United Nations estimates that 805, 805 million people of the 7.3 billion people in this world, or one in nine, were suffering from chronic undernourishment between 2012 and 2014. One in nine of us, globally, mostly children, undernourished. And the reason is very, very simple. We're not interacting with our planet in a balanced way. The destruction of our basic survival resources is creating perpetual increase in global poverty. While the corporation wealth-funded science and technology profit production and consumption lobby continues to promise a saviour. People are starving to death. So how big are the, how, 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 how good are those big universities out there that are massively funded by that corporation, technology, profit production and consumption lobby? How good, how good are they? What, what use are they? And it's not GMO that's going to help us. Because what interaction does that have to the environment that's of any benefit? Where's the feedback loop there? It's not letting poison companies control our global food supply, is it? Do you think? Because they do. Poison companies control our global food. They're experts at making poison. Who decided that was a good idea? It's ethical design science in action that will get us out of this mess. The definition of wealth has been manipulated, disfigured, mutated, if you will. We've been led astray. And we've been led astray with the media Social media, multimedia, World Wide Web, weapon. Well, every weapon can be a tool. And we need to turn that tool right around. We need to move the goalposts. We need to alter our aspirations. We need to do this and when we, when we do this, we will achieve true wealth and not only understanding, but using permaculture design as the directive for positive action. We have, as a birthright, very basic requirements in life that we are entitled to. I feel as an international community, we should make every possible effort to reclaim these basics in order to become truly wealthy. The core requirements of true prosperity are abundance of clean air and abundance of clean water and a, an abundance of clean, nutritious food. With these fundamentals in place, we can continue on to create an abundance of sensible, passive, energy-designed housing and low embodied energy, therefore providing for our for an abundantly supportive community, unified in action by per permaculture ethics. This will create the ultimate evolution in humanity's potential. The revolution is no longer disguised as gardening, but obviously sedition and permaculture, people power. <laughs> A meaningful existence fulfills us. We need to progress on from where we are to where we want to be. This in itself is a very meaningful process. With the widespread adoption of permaculture design globally, we will have no need for industrial agriculture in its present intensive form. Conventional chemical as well as organic farming both lack sensitivity for global patterning 
appropriate scale and beneficial positioning of interactive diversity. Industrial agriculture is inherently inefficient, obviously and inevitably unsustainable. We have been passionately teaching people how to rapidly make soil on small scale for many years with specific techniques and creating local compost it's very feasible to design productive ecosystems to facilitate the creation of soil over large areas. Mass education is now possible for all. And I stand before you as testament to that. All children and adults willing to learn can be completely fluent in this patterned language to a level of understanding that can be expressed in eloquence. I've always been worried about my carbon credits. I was never quite sure whether I should stop flying and stay home and just create the fin dawn of permaculture kind of thing. Facebook told me I was wrong when I signed on to Facebook and friended everybody that wanted to friend me, it kind of went a bit mad. <laughs> and my advisor said, you're nuts. And then they made me a public figure and I still kept going. But people kept coming to me saying, I'm in somewhere crazy because of you and a video and a connection and, so, and on and on and on. So many people, I thought, I've paid my carbon credits, thank goodness. I think I can keep flying. <laughs> and then... I came across a block that had an average of 30 students. I'm never going to be able to teach all the people that I need to teach. And I said, how do I teach a thousand people on every course? Or more? I came up with a system where I taught 30 years worth of students in 12 weeks on a face-to-face -face ratio and got a better result than any face-to-face -face courses I've ever taught. A better result. I say a better result because the students went into action and produced designs, 20% of them, I could never do in my wildest dreams as long as I live. They're better designs than I can actually do. I've never seen that before. So I did it three times. I'm 90 years in front. I just bought 90 years of carbon credits. <laughs> Let's strive towards positive solutions. It is essential that international permaculture design is adopted as the core of all relevant science. With our ethics at the core, as we go into action, then and only then will we engage as a serious effect, a serious effort and effect for all people. We'll start to implement and invest in a completely global extension of true sustainability that will repair the earth and create absolute abundance. The current crisis is actually our ultimate opportunity to evolve as a species. We've been presented with the chance to learn from the transformation we have to make. The path from the negative death and destruction economy rooted in the production and consumption system, must begin. We have a duty to advance into the endlessly expansive economy of ecology that will produce a balanced global environment with a stable, plentiful earth for all future generations. There is no limit to richness in natural systems, and the more we engage in permaculture design systems, the more intricate and refined they become. By starting with the core ethics that govern our actions and by allowing the systems that we implement to, 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 to demonstrate their evolutions, we will inevitably create a world so abundant it will exceed the edges of our present imagination. True wealth be will become endlessly available to us. True wealth is achievable by design and now is the time. Our ethos of, ethos of taking action is to make sure that we care for the earth, 
care for each other and leave a positive legacy for future generations. A complete transformation of humanity's action is possible. We can grow from the most destructive species on Earth and return to our rightful position as the facilitators of Earth's ecological function through permaculture design. Our common goal unifies the global community and is our true inheritance. A return to observing and learning from nature is non-negotiable. From observation, we can take these lessons and turn them into directives for action. With the ethical design framework and its principles inspired by nature and an emphasis on low-cost solutions, we can meet our everyday needs. From Greenland to Australia, from Korea to South Africa, across the globe, we can live in absolute abundance. We can be very optimistic that this can be achieved as everything we need to know is available to us. There needs to be a global effort to redesign the systems that meet our basic needs along ecological principles. This will dramatically change our fortunes with a realistic prospect of a positive future for all. With 40 years of testing and experimentation, permaculture is ready to scale up. Alhamdulillah. <laughs>